Hey guys, so for today's video, I wanted to do just like a Q&A, get ready with me, kind of a chatty video. I'm in the mood just to chat with you guys. I feel like I've been behind on YouTube, honestly, so I just wanted to do something chill today. So if you're getting ready, let's get ready together and do our makeup. Kind of going to do like a natural everyday kind of look, so if that sounds good to you, keep on watching. My skin is so glowy right now. I turned on my camera and I was like, oh my gosh, it's from my Tula sunscreen, the one in the yellow bottle. It's so freaking good. Anyways, I asked you guys on YouTube and Instagram just any questions you have for me in general, so let me pull those up. Okay, I'm gonna start with eyebrows, and I recently bought the new Patrick Ta eyebrow pencil, and I've really been liking this. The tip is like a tiny little triangle, so it's like the perfect shape for me. So let's zoom in and do some eyebrows and chat. All right, so the first question says, I know from watching your channel that you were in college. Have you graduated and what are your plans for the future? So I did graduate college. When did I graduate? What year is it, 2022? Is it bad I can't remember what year I graduated college? Ooh, it was three or four years ago. I wanna say 2018, 2019, yes, I did finish college. Um, I finished at Portland State University here in Oregon and I majored in marketing. I've been doing YouTube since 2016 and like I've been a YouTuber for a while but I still wanted to get my degree just to kind of have that to fall back on if I need it. Cause I know that my YouTube job's not gonna last forever. Like I don't think I'll be a content creator forever but I wanna be one as long as possible if that makes sense. So honestly my plans for the future is just to keep grinding it out and doing what I'm doing. You know, I have my second business, The Bright Lashes, so working on selling products and things like that, and I kinda wanna get better at like marketing those products and kinda learning more about e-commerce and like running ads and things like that. Just gonna keep doing what I'm doing for now. That's my plan. Ooh, one person asked, are there more pros or more cons to living on your parents' property? So if you didn't know, I am renting for my parents right now. So on their new property, they have a whole separate building, which is an ADU, which is where me and my boyfriend currently live. I would say there's more pros than cons. The biggest pro just being the amount of space we have compared to an apartment, um, especially the yard. Like, Rue loves it here. And, like, my goal in life is to make Rue happy. Like, you do things for your dog, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the biggest pro is just the space and the cheap rent, obviously. Renting is just freaking ridiculous right now. Like, I don't wanna go back to apartment life if I don't have to. So honestly, our plan is to kind of live here, save up a ton of money and hopefully buy a house in the next few years and then never have to go back to apartment life. So I also did get a couple questions on my hair. Someone asked, how is it to go from the long hair you had to short, then weeks later, shorter? Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. So when I first got the haircut, when it was kind of like to here with that like purple and kind of black color, it honestly wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I'm glad that my hairstylist did that because it was just a nice transition from going too long to short to super short right now. So I'm glad we did that transition, but like as soon as I got it cut short, I was like, I want it shorter. Um, and I'm honestly really happy with the length right now. I'm still learning how to style this and kind of work with it. Okay, let's do some face makeup. Elf sent me the Halo Glow Liquid Filter, which I was so excited about because it's like out of stock everywhere. They sent me three shades and I think I'm shade two, but this still looks pretty dark and I am not fake tanned right now. So we will see about this shade match, but I mean, it is like a super thin product. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, but I kind of want to talk about just like my thoughts about having this short hair now. Ooh, and maybe why I did this color, because I don't think I talked about that yet. So, like I said, I cut it short, wanted it shorter, and the reason I did this color, which is almost like exactly my natural color, my stylist killed it at getting this color. This looks like my natural hair, honestly. I kinda wanna stop dyeing my hair for a while. Since I was like 18 years old, I've always been that person that's like changing their hair color every two to three months doing something different. And it's just expensive. So this was before my YouTube days, but I used to have purple hair, blue hair. I did silver, I did all over blonde. I've been black. I've been like so many colors, um, just different shades of brown. And it, I was feeling like every time I went to get my hair done, I had to change it. And I'm kind of just now realizing I don't have to do that. Like I can keep one style, one color and just work with what I have. And so my boyfriend and I made a bet. He's a betting man. And so we made a bet that I will not change my hair color from this until next year. 
and it's gonna be hard. Um, that does not include like refreshes or just like glosses. Those are okay to do, but like changing my hair color, I'm trying to not do. And honestly, I just wanna save some money too. Like I, I spend a lot of money on getting services done and like Botox and lip filler and shit like that and waxes. And I'm just trying to cut back a little bit on that. Um, Cause it's not always necessary. This looks exactly like the Charlotte Tilbury. Exactly. Good job, Elf. And so that's why I made my hair my natural color, because I was like, if I'm not dyeing my hair for four or five months, I just want it to be my natural color. So we'll see. I think I can do it, and I'm just like, okay, we're gonna save money, it'll be fine. Like, your natural hair color is pretty, it works with your skin tone, like, it works with your features, like, that's why this is my freaking hair color, right? I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydro Maniac. And now, honestly, having short hair, such a good decision. I do not regret it at all. I freaking love having my hair short. Like there has not been one day where I'm like, oh, I miss my long hair. I wish I could do things. No, not at all. Like I wish I did this sooner, honestly. If you've been thinking about chopping your hair off, just do it. Stop thinking about it, just do it. And I wish I did it sooner. It's just so easy for me to work with. And it's nice because I do have naturally kind of textured hair. I did do some curls today, so this isn't all natural, but like I don't have pin straight hair naturally. So I think that's why I like it a lot on myself. And I think I do feel more like myself with this short hair. And it's kind of fun to style it different ways. Like some days I make it kind of nice and curly. Some days I make it freaking messy. Um, some days I like to go a little more tomboy and like wear a backwards hat and I love that look as well. So it's just fun to play around with it. Are you tired of being told you look like Katy Perry? <laughs> um, no. I love when people tell me I look like celebrities because I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. Another big one I get is Megan Fox and I don't see it at all, but I think Megan Fox is fucking hot. So I appreciate that. I also get Brooke Shields all the time, Katy Perry. I've also gotten like um, Emma Watson, Harry Potter, yeah, that's Emma Watson, right? Um, I get a mixture of people, but I, I love those compliments. If you could sing a song with any musical group, what would it be? Does Taylor Swift count as a musical group? Cause it would be Taylor Swift. Like I, I'm a Swifty for life. I'm a Taylor Swift whore. So yes, I would love to sing with Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, these questions are great. If you were on death row and you had to choose a last meal, what would you eat? A burger and french fries. Like, that is my favorite meal, hands down, with the fresh Coke, like a McDonald's Coke. Oh, the crispiness. I'm gonna use the Say Sun Melt. Still in love with this bronzer. Now that you live in a house with plenty of space and a yard, are you gonna give Rue a sibling? My boyfriend and I talk about this every day and I get so excited thinking about it. Like. I just love dogs. I want all the dogs in the world. So yes, we do want to get her a sibling um, and now would be the perfect time to do it just because we have all this space and we're not in an apartment with steps and all that stuff. We have space for it, you know? It's like definitely part of our plan, but we haven't really like looked into it yet. Um, I would love to rescue like a pit bull. We also talked about getting like a Bernese mountain dog. <laughs> so when Rue was a puppy, Everyone thought she was a Bernese Mountain Dog just because she has that black tri-coloring and she was just like a chonky little nugget. So everyone's like, oh, is that a Bernese Mountain Dog? And I was like, God, no. But we talk about getting one now and like how cute it would look like to have like a big fluffy dog and then Rue, like, oh. We definitely want to get a bigger size dog for sure. I mean, we'll see. Like, I definitely want to. Um, I also feel like I kind of got to talk to my parents about it just because like we are on their property, you know? Um, but I hope so. Someone asked, what would be your dream job if you weren't in the beauty industry? So a little background on me. I mean, we talked about college, I majored in marketing, and I also have worked at Ulta and Sephora. And both at Ulta and Sephora, I worked in like operations and doing like shipment and all like the behind the scenes stuff. And I loved that. And one of my favorite things to do was to build the new displays for like new brands, new products, end caps, things like that. Like that was just so much fun for me. So I think if I wasn't a YouTuber, I would love to work with brands on designing what their space should look like in Sephora or Ulta or just in like any store in general and like what the shelf should look like, which product should be featured. Like I love that kind of stuff. So I think I would still kind of be in the beauty industry. Just, it's just what I love, but kind of like designing and marketing 
in those terms. Do you ever feel pressured to only create looks with new releases? Yes and no. I try really hard to create at least like two to three videos with a new eyeshadow palette because I want to show you guys multiple ways to use it. I've just always kind of had that eye for like color combinations and I know that some people don't so I'm going to show you like use these colors together, use these ones, here's a soft look, here's a dramatic look. Like I just like to show you guys a variety of looks. So do I feel pressured? Not really, because um, it's fun for me, but I do try to go back and dig into old palettes. Like, you know, I just use like the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz one. Um, sometimes I'll do like throwback Thursday videos on my channel. And then in December, I always do like my 12 days of tutorials where I try to post a new video every other day with an older eyeshadow palette. So if you like older eyeshadow palettes, stay tuned for December because that's like literally all I do in December. You have mentioned that you have one eye that's more hooded than the other. How do you adapt your application so your eyes look similar as possible? Okay, that's a good question. So my left eye to me is like my good eye. Like I just like how my eye shape it's a little less hooded, but when I'm it's hard for me to relax my face. When I'm relaxed, this eye just droops down a little bit more out here on the outer corner. I don't know if you can tell. Um, there's just a lot of movement right here. And sometimes when I'm doing my eyeshadow in a mirror, I don't really notice um, like if I do my eyeshadow uneven, but if I'm watching it back on camera, I'm like, oh shit, you should have blended it up a little bit higher. So my biggest tip is to be like, do your eyeshadow, finish it up, take a picture and like have it reversed so it's not like when you're looking in a mirror like it's like how you look in real life and I think that's going to be the most true way to see how your eyeshadow looks so so usually I just try to blend this eye just a little bit higher up is kind of all I do take a picture see how it looks see if you need to fix anything and that's that okay let's do blush hmm what blush do I want to wear I mean it's like 100 degrees today so let's do a bright blush Whew, this is the makeup by Mario Raspberry. But someone asked, how did you decide to design lashes? Were there styles out there not what you liked? Was it designing styles that you haven't seen before? Okay, so how did I start the bright lashes? Kind of the big reason why I started bright lashes was kind of for myself. Like I couldn't find lashes that I liked to wear consistently. I was always jumping in between brands and styles and for a while I was wearing mink lashes and then I started to realize that mink lashes are not good. Um, so I wanted faux mink lashes and I just, I couldn't find good faux mink lashes on the market. So I started doing some research and then at one point I was like, I should just create my own lashes and then use them in all my videos and only use my lashes. And so I did. So I did kind of start it for myself and I just designed the styles that I like to wear consistently. And then I also started to design styles that like I don't personally love, but I know that other people will love and that's kind of what I'm getting into more now. So for example, like my supernatural lash called Minimalist, I personally don't wear that because it's too soft for me. A lot more mature people like that lash, people with glasses like that lash because it's shorter. Sometimes I get so caught up in being like, oh, I won't like that lash so I shouldn't launch that. And then I'm like, wait, someone's gonna like that. Someone's gonna fall in love with that lash. Also my lash style Adorn, um, I just used it in a recent video. But one of my friends, Abby, is obsessed with Adorn. She's getting married next month and she's like, I'm wearing Adorn for my wedding. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, but like, she loves Adorn. She has like these beautiful round eyes, so it looks perfect on her. So it is kind of tricky, but it's fun to create things that I wouldn't love, but I know other people would. Someone asked, do you and your man plan to get married one day? I mean, yeah, I'm not in any rush to get married, but I can tell you, I do not want a wedding. I see all these TikToks, just all the stuff online, the TV shows about weddings, and I'm like, there is no way I could do that. Personally, I just don't see a point in spending so much money for other people to be happy on a day that should be about me and my relationship. Does that make sense? So yeah, I would totally marry my boyfriend, but would I have a wedding? No. I would elope. I would totally elope. But honestly, I'm not in a rush to do anything. I'm super happy with my life right now with him and Rue, and I wouldn't change a thing, so... Not right now, but maybe in the future. Someone asked, how do you blend your falsies with your real lashes? I always have a huge gap above my lash line. Um, I have a couple videos that are really in depth on how I apply my lashes, but just quickly, apply your lashes, let the glue dry, take a squeezy tool, this one's by my brand, The Bright Lashes, um, and you're just gonna squeeze your natural lashes with the fake ones at the band. And so it gets super, super close. And then I like to take a black eyeshadow and a little angle brush and just stamp on top the lash band to really blend it in and it looks flawless every time. Someone asked, what is the best ice cream flavor? It depends on my mood. I got two answers. If I'm at the beach, the Oregon coast, I want a rainbow sherbet in a waffle cone. 
that's all I want. But if I'm craving something like a little sweeter, I'd probably do like a chocolate chip cookie dough. I think that'd be my answer. All right, pop on my Sigma under eye corrector. Look at how much this I've used. Have you or do you plan to ever get Botox or fillers or any other cosmetic surgery? So I do have lip filler right now. Um, I've been getting it for a few years now. I think I get touched up maybe like once or twice a year. I'm actually getting it dissolved in October because I've had some migration up here and so we're just gonna kind of fix that and then I will probably add more filler once they're kind of dissolved and fixed. The migration is totally normal. It happens to like pretty much everyone who gets filler. You can't really do anything to stop it. So yes, I have lip filler and I do get Dysport in my forehead, which is like a stronger version of Botox. So. I mean, it's kind of wearing off a little bit, but I just get that. How come you cut your beautiful hair? I liked it when it was long. Because I wanted to. Dye your hair black, then straighten it. No. It's so funny, people on the internet telling me what to do with my hair next. I had this one person tell me to grow out my hair, dye it blonde, and wear it straight. And I was like, that would absolutely ruin my hair. No. <laughs> like... People are funny. I need to try this Say Concealer again, the Hydra Beam. I still have mixed feelings about it. I don't really know if it does what I want it to do. Someone asked, what do you do after you film an eye look? Wear it for a while and go out for the day or just wash it off? That's a good question. So, kind of depends. If I'm doing like a one-eyed makeup look where you're only seeing one eye on camera, that means I only did that one eye, and so yes, I do wash it off right away. If I did film like a full face of makeup and you're seeing my full face, I usually do just wear it for the rest of the day. But like for today, I have to film a makeup removal TikTok after I film this video, so I'm literally gonna wash off my makeup after this, which is kind of sad, but it's just part of the job. What made you fall in love with eyeshadow out of all the makeup? That's a good question. So personally, I've always really liked my eyes. Like I have pretty blue eyes, I've always liked them, and like, you know when you're like 14 years old and you get a camera and you take like super close macro shots? I would always take pictures of my eyes with just like my crappy mascara on, like not good makeup just cause I liked how my eye color looked. You know, I'd like Photoshop it and like saturate it and do all that stuff cause you're like 14 years old, right? And I've always felt like eyeshadow is the best way to kind of change your makeup look. Like your eyeshadow look can mean so much. Are you doing a dark smoky eye? Are you doing a natural look? Are you doing like a bright neon look? And it's just a fun way to just kind of show your mood for the day, your personality. I think one thing that really stuck out too is like when I worked at Ulta, you have to wear all black. And so doing fun eyeshadow was my way for me to just be creative and just like show who I am. So yeah, I think I just like eyeshadow because it's the thing you can change the most about your makeup. Like you can only do so many things with your blush, with your bronzer, with your lips, you know what I mean? Someone asked what made you decide to chop off your hair. So I did do a whole video um, about like the first time I chopped it to like that purple short look, but I really go in depth on like all my thoughts before on why I chopped it off and all my anxious feelings and <laughs> all that stuff. See, whenever I do cream products, I feel like I have to keep reapplying them. Does anyone else do this? Someone said, should I get a pixie I have a round face? Yes, fucking do it. My stylist made like an Instagram post about this, but like, if you want a haircut, do it. Like, it doesn't matter what other people think, what other people say. So many people were like, don't chop off your curly hair. And I'm like, I wanna do it, so I'm gonna do it. And the thing with your hair is that whether you have long or short hair, there's different styles, you know what I mean? You can have a long shag cut, you can have layers, you can have no layers, you can have a bob, you can have an A-line bob, you can have a long pixie, you can have a short pixie. So I'm not like a hair expert or anything, but I do think that there's a hairstyle for everyone. And if you want short hair, if you have a good hairstylist, they'll help you find something that works for your face shape. I'm gonna set under my eyes with my Kosas Cloud Set. Um, have you performed live? So I think this person's talking about singing, and yes, I have. When I was in high school, they had this uh, like little event. It was called Apollos Unplugged, because we were like the Sunset Apollos. So I kind of have a terrible memory, but I think you audition um, either by yourself or with a group of friends, some kind of song or just like maybe a little act you wanted to do. It could literally be like whatever you want. And if you got selected, you would play at Apollo's Unplugged. It was like a cute little event they did at nighttime seasonally. So I did that a couple times. I did it with a couple friends in high school. I did it solo a few times, like playing the piano and singing. And that was so much fun. Like I would get so nervous, but I would do it and I loved it. Uh, someone asked, when was the last time you had your hair so short? 
never. The shortest I've ever had before this was like in middle school. I had it probably to like my chin and I had these ugly ass bangs across my forehead. It was like totally my ugly phase. Um, but that was the shortest I've ever had it before this. Okay, and that was kind of the majority of the questions that I got on Instagram and YouTube. So that was fun. Almost done with the make. I'm almost done with my makeup. We're kind of getting in there. Okay, let's do a little bit of eyes. So I have been trying to become a cream stick eyeshadow person, and I find it tricky. I have these from About Face I've been using, and I also bought this one from Thrive Cosmetics. I see these ads all over TikTok, and I love the Thrive Cosmetics um, Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. So I was like, sure, let's try this. And I still don't know how to use it properly yet. So it's like, stick on one side, a little blender here. Um, I'm just gonna throw it on, let's see how it works. I feel like the thing is that these dry pretty quickly. So you have to work pretty fast with these. So I'm gonna throw this all over my lid. I need blind with my finger. Also, the shade of this is Dr. Q. Is that the name of the shade? Okay. It seems like it's on my lid, but I need it in my crease, but it's just a little tricky to blend. So if you guys have any like tips or tricks for eyeshadow sticks, that just rhymed, I would love to know. Because I feel like that just looks really sloppy. And I've also tried to use this thing. I mean, it's not terrible. I don't know, I've just been trying to do something different for like an everyday look. Also, these sticks kind of hurt my eyes because I feel like I have to press really hard to get the pigment on. Okay, let's do a little under the eye. Use the little smudger do here. I don't know, what do you guys think? It is a very like kind of effortless look. I also have these one from About Face. What shade is this? Pearly. I think this one was good for like the inner corner. So I think of that, that's cute. Maybe I'll bring a little bit like in here. See, these ones feel a little creamier than the Thrive Cosmetics one. But they're still just tricky to work with. Okay, now I'm gonna do mascara. Again, I'm using the Thrive Cosmetics one. This is my favorite mascara ever. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys about something. And I think I'm gonna do kind of a video about this. I have been in this mindset for years that like, I don't wanna finish the products I love because I don't wanna run out of it. So instead I use the products that I don't really enjoy, but they look okay. And then the products I do love end up expiring or just going bad because I haven't used it and I hold on to it for like three years. Like, does anyone else do this? Because I feel crazy and I was telling my boyfriend about it and he was like, why don't you just use the products you like? And I was like, cause I don't wanna run out of it, but like I can always buy more. Um, I do this with moisturizer all the time. Like I have a moisturizer I love to use but like if I, I don't wanna feel like I'm wasting it, but like you're not wasting it by using a product. So I'm trying to change my mindset about that. And this got kind of triggered by this mascara because I love this mascara. It doesn't flake on me. It looks really good. Um, it wears great throughout the day, but I don't wanna wear it because I don't wanna finish the tube because I always wanna have it. And I just bought a second one because I had my first tube for like over a year. And I was like, Angela, you can't have a mascara for over a year just buy a new one. I think pretty soon I'm gonna do kind of like a declutter empties video because I have been letting myself use the products I love because I've been trying to use the products I do love, finish them up, so I wanna do like an empties slash a declutter pretty soon. I'm gonna pop on an easy lip. This is the Fenty Cream and Fenty Glow. Okay, and then for my last step, I take a Q-tip, but I recently got these reusable q-tips from this company called last object um i'm doing a reel with them this is not sponsored in any way i think it's called their like last beauty swab so they came out with these three different shaped like q-tips right here right and they're reusable and i always use a q-tip to take off my mascara on my eyelid right so i always have like a bunch of q-tips around and i throw them away and it just seems wasteful so they have these like different shapes so there's this one that's like a nice little angle tip right so any mascara that's right here, you just like brush it away, just like you would with a Q-tip. And then you just wash this with like soap and water and it is double-ended too. Let me show you all the sizes because they're kind of cool. There's also this one that has like, kind of like a texture to it. They say it's kind of good for maybe like combing out your lashes or something like that. 
You could also use these to like clean up, you know, like lipstick smudges and things. This guy as well. I'm not too sure. I guess I would use this for maybe more edge work. Uh, maybe like lower lash line cleanup. I don't know. It's just kind of cool. So if you ever see me using this like black Q-tip, that's what this is. All right, and that is going to wrap up this video. So here is my super natural kind of everyday look. I did use a lot of cream products today and I will link everything I used down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of chit chatty Q&A get ready with me video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.